Hola, ¿qué tal? Hi, I'm Rob Martinez, state historian of New Mexico, and this is New Mexico history in 10 minutes. Thomas Jefferson prophesied that eventually the new nation of the United States would eventually come into contact or even conflict with Spain in the Southwest. He knew that his new country, the United States of America, would have to uh, deal with uh, places like New Mexico, Texas, and California if his country was going to reign from sea to shining sea. He also knew that it could be peaceful, but could also get violent. Well, in 1807, something happened in New Mexico that foreshadowed what was to come, a prediction of the future. A man named Zebulon Pike was sent with about 15 men to explore the Louisiana Territory and the Arkansas River. He was the son of an American revolutionary, and eventually what happens, uh, he first goes to Louisiana and the Plains in 1806, but by 1807, he's in what is now Colorado Territory, Colorado, which was New Mexico. Now, he ends up uh, encountering a lot of Native American peoples in the area, and he keeps a journal, which is fascinating. Uh, he talks about uh, the mountain that will eventually carry his name, Pike's Peak, but was known to the Ute people as Tava, which means the sun, and to the Nuevo Mexicanos as El Capitan, the captain. Soldiers from New Mexico, Nuevo Mexicanos, catch Zebulon, Pike, and his soldiers and take them south to be interrogated to find out what they are doing in New Mexico territory. It's interesting. He describes the stops along the way. Uh, he anglicizes the names of the pueblos, uh, San Juan to St. John's. He goes to Santa Cruz, Santa Fe, Santo Domingo. He talks about uh, St. Philip, San Felipe. He calls Sandia, interestingly enough, San Dia, like Saint Dia or Saint Diaz. Uh, he, that's how he hears it. And then he goes to Alburquerque, Atrisco, Isleta, before heading south to Guadalupe del Paso, which is today Juarez. It's interesting uh, because his journal is a great insight into New Mexico in those waning years when Spain's world empire is starting to crumble. And that includes New Mexico. He describes the people, the towns, the economy, the culture. Uh, I'll give some examples, which I think are quite indicative of what he saw. He describes the population of all the towns he goes to, whether they're pueblos or villas, uh, Spanish towns. He says that the people there are about 20% um, uh, what he would call Spanish, about 30% mestizo, mixed blood, and the rest, 50% uh, are Native American Indians. And so he's talking about some Pueblo people, of course, in the Pueblos, but he's also talking about Genizaro Indians of different backgrounds. So we know that already by 1807, were a vitally mixed population. He describes the buildings as low and made of mud or adobe, flat roofed with uh, drainage pipes to um, let water off the roof when it rains. He says that it rains very rarely, maybe once a year, and that he was told it hadn't rained for a couple of years. He uh, says that the people treated him very graciously. Uh, in each town, he was greeted by the local priest and he would eat a sumptuous meal. Uh, there was a lot of wine, apparently, and musicians. I, as a musician myself, I found that fascinating. Uh, they would usually play a violin. Sometimes there would be uh, drums uh, or uh, cymbals or a guitar, but there was always a, a meal that was accompanied by music. At one place, he said that he ate a lot of food or drank a little bit too much and uh, suffered some uh, stomach issues. I'll just leave it at that. 
Uh, no doubt he may not have been accustomed to the spicy foods we have here in New Mexico and had in 1807. I believe at one point in Albuquerque, uh, the priest took him into the church and knelt down to pray with him and grabbed his hand and tried to get him to kneel uh, to the uh, santo image of a crucified Christ and Pike refused to. Uh, he was Protestant and the priest at one point tells him in Spanish, oh, uh, how sad, que lastima, uh, that you do not want to become a Christian. Uh, and then he got up and smiled and walked out of the church with him. Uh, but Pike uh, said that he had been somewhat uh, traumatized by this episode. It's interesting when he describes the churches because he describes the uh, buildings as kind of rude and um, dilapidated and um, not very civilized. But when he describes the church at Santo Domingo and then later at Albuquerque, he says, these mud buildings seem to ha have nothing in them. But when you go in, he says, they're just filled with the most amazing art, some of it local and some of it brought up from the South, uh, paintings, sculptures, um, images of saints, the patron saints of the churches and of the towns and the pueblos. So he gives this interesting contrast between what the churches look like from the outside and what they uh, are on the inside. So I found that fascinating. He calls the people Mexican, and which is interesting because there was no Mexico yet, but he sometimes refers to the local population as Mexican and sometimes as Spanish. He says that the people here speak uh, Castilian, um, not the Spanish of Spain. Uh, the, the dialect of Spanish we find in central Spain is Castellano, Castilian. But Castilian also refers to just the language of Castile, which is all Spanish, Castellano. Uh, in other words, um, the people of New Mexico at that time spoke Castellano, Castilian. The people of Mexico spoke Castellano and speak Castellano, Castilian, and in South America speak Castilian, etc., and on and on. So that's also uh, interesting. There are also French people mentioned. One of his guides is a Frenchman, and at certain points he speaks French. It's, it's almost like uh, an episode of I Love Lucy where he speaks English uh, and then speaks French to the Frenchman who speaks Spanish, who then speaks Spanish to the uh, local priests and uh, governing officials and the local people. So it's quite interesting to see that uh, polyglot situation going on. He also describes uh, some of the food. He says at one place he's offered chocolate. Uh, he describes the agriculture in the area. He says that here the people uh, grow corn and wheat and barley and grapes. He describes the local government as very military and that the people are really over uh, ruled by the military leaders, that even the alcaldes mayores, the, the local magistrates, they uh, might uh, enforce a rule or a law, but then they'll be uh, overruled by the local military leader and that at one point they would go on a uh, exploration or an expedition and that the Spanish leader, uh, if he was met up with any sort of dissent, would treat it harshly. Uh, one At one point, they went out into the plains and a, a, a soldier got a petition uh, of 200 men asking, why are we here? And he says, I go where my horse leads me. And they demanded to know why they were going on this expedition. So he had some of his soldiers build uh, uh, gallows. And he said, anybody wants to question me, I'll hang them. And the man who started uh, the questioning uh, was lashed 50 times. So it was a pretty harsh and uh, brutal system. He described how when he would go to the Pueblos that the, the governors or the chiefs of the Pueblos had canes with uh, gold or silver tips uh, that uh, represented their sovereignty and their authority, which I also found interesting because we know later on we'll see uh, President Abraham Lincoln also gives the Pueblos canes of authority. It's interesting how he describes the economy of New Mexico. He says that New Mexico produced and sold and traded animal skins, furs, buffalo hides, dried meat, 
copper goods, but in turn got from the south from places like uh, Chihuahua or Sonora or Sinaloa, uh, things like um, ammunition, steel, wine, chocolate, gold, silver, and um, cheese, which I found interesting. And he also goes on to name the prices of goods here, how much a horse costs, a mule, how much flour is, how much wine costs. And he notes uh, very slyly that it's very expensive, uh, the implication being that Americans uh, could uh, do really well undercutting the prices from south of New Mexico. So we see this uh, proto-capitalism uh, being developed uh, by people like Pike uh, and others that eventually will come after him to New Mexico. He gives a brief history of New Mexico, and it's quite interesting. He, he says, uh, in 1594, two priests explored here, then went south, and they found a monk named Juan de Oñate who came up and explored and conquered and colonized. Well, Oñate was not a monk. We know that. But he does describe the Pueblo Revolt of 1680 and gives a pretty good uh, general history of the area. He mentions the first American that he knew of to come into the areas of Louisiana, New Mexico, uh, according to him, a man named James Pursley, who was from Kentucky. And he ends up in New Mexico just a couple years before uh, Pike does. Pike is eventually taken down uh, to Guadalupe del Paso. He describes the people there. He says he's treated very well, he and his soldiers. And he's interrogated about why he's in the area. And the, of course, the local people want to know why there are Americans exploring here. Well, things will change, obviously, over the next, oh, 20 to 50 years. We'll see what happens. But Pike is eventually sent packing uh, back east and thankfully, he kept his diary, and it's an amazing document that comes down to us to tell us about New Mexico in the early 1800s. Muchas gracias. Thank you for being here. See you next time. Bye.